Coming up on this edition of the Paw Report, we're talking about giant breed dogs. This is Sully. He's an Irish wolfhound, and he's one of those giant breeds. So we'll tell you more about him coming up. So stay tuned. Production for the Paw Report is made possible by... Inyart Tire and Auto Center in Charleston and Mattoon. Inyart offers complete auto repair. Inyart Tire and Auto Center cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. More information at Inyart.com. Hello and welcome to the Paw Report. I'm Kate Pleasant, your host, and we're joined by Sully. He's an Irish wolfhound you can see here. And Sully's owner is Jacqueline Hickman. She's from Charleston. And we're talking about living with a giant breed dog. And Sully, being an Irish wolfhound, is obviously a giant breed. <laughs> oh, Sully. So can you tell me, first of all, what kind of drove you to a giant breed dog? Um, well, I've had two friends that had giant breeds. One had a Mastiff and one had a giant Schnauzer. And I just really liked both of those dogs and they were big dogs. They have kind of a larger than life personality and um, they both really loved their owners and wanted to be with their owners all the time. So I wanted a dog like that. And what qualifies as a giant breed? Like you named a couple there, but you know, what makes them a giant breed? Um, it's dogs that weigh over a hundred pounds. What does Sully currently weigh? Um, he is 127 pounds right now and he's eight months old. And um, his father weighed 180, so he should be somewhere approaching 180. So he's not going to be a little dog, nope. <laughs> even though he's a puppy. <laughs> he's gotten up and taken a walk now, but I'm sure he'll be back at some point. So um, when considering a giant breed dog like Sully, you know, what kinds of things did you have to think about? Um, well, everything costs a little bit more. Um, dog food, he eats about as much dog food as like two normal size labs would eat. So say like a regular Labrador maybe? Yeah. How much is that in a day? Um, right now Sully eats about eight cups a day of a premium dog food. When he is full grown he'll eat a little less than that. They actually don't need quite as much when they mature out. So I imagine that can be kind of expensive. It is. Um, <laughs> it approaches a hundred dollars a month in dog food. Um, other things that cost more um, is his monthly heartworm medicine and his monthly flea and tick because the doses are larger than you would give other dogs, so every month that costs a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever have to give them medication or anything like that, it costs more usually because the doses are higher. Mm -hmm. Because he's bigger, he weighs more, yep. therefore there's more actual mm -hmm. medication that the dog requires. So a couple of things to consider there. Um, what about grooming needs? Irish wolfhounds, I mean, they're large, and I assume that they have some special grooming needs? Um, a little bit. They are, well, we uh, my friend calls it wash and wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've um, heard that term before. He just gets brushed weekly and um, they have a puppy coat that I that you remove once. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's called stripping and I had to strip him one time. It took um, a couple days to do his whole body, uh, about five hours worth of hair plucking. Because that's essentially, <laughs> you know, taking like a butter knife, right, or something and pulling yeah. out some of that hair. Yeah, we just use our fingers and fingers. you pull out the longest hairs. Mm -hmm. And then his um, adult coat will come in nice and harsh, which is what you want for an Irish wolfhound. And other than that, it's just trimming up his face the way you want it and um, normal care like nail trimming and keeping his ears clean. So that's kind of similar to your yeah. other breeds of dogs. Yeah. But so what have you discovered is different about living with a giant breed? <laughs> he takes up more room. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everything's bigger. His dog bed is bigger. Um, he outgrew his crate and the only crates that fit these big dogs are colossal size crates which take up a lot of room in your house. So we found that using an X-Pen which is just mm -hmm. a short fence thing that you can put in any shape you want works um, better than a crate because it's more movable and if you are gonna go on, travel with your dog that folds up easier and quicker so it makes it easier to travel um, and still have a way to confine him if you need to. Um, a car 
is something you really need to think about. <laughs> that was about. one of my questions. How, what if you had to move that animal somewhere? Right, so you have to make sure that you have a vehicle large enough that you could fit one. Um, we have a hatchback type car mm -hmm. where the, all the seats fold down and he fits in there. If we had more than one, that wouldn't work. Um, a lot of people that have large breed dogs have large vans and you can get all the seats put down in it and then you can have more than one back yeah, there. Yeah, I think you mentioned that once to me when I spoke to you before yeah. we went on the show. You said that some people that have multiple Irish wolfhounds just have the big white vans with no seats in the back. Yep. <laughs> yep. And they just put dog beds in there. <laughs> okay. Well, I imagine, you know, 120 pounds, 150 yeah. pound dog, that would be necessary. So another thing to consider would be transporting them. So. What is it like as far as uh, sleeping arrangements at your house? I assume he doesn't sleep in your bed. <laughs> um, he tries to get in the bed, but he doesn't really fit. <laughs> so we have a dog bed right next to our bed that is uh, cushioned. Um, that is something that you do need to consider with the large breeds is their joints when they lay on the hard ground can get um, hygromas or bursas, they're mm -hmm. also called, which is a swelling on the joint to protect it. Um, but you do want to try to prevent that. They often still get them. Sully actually has a small one on his elbow already because he likes to lay on the hard, cool floor. Of course, because they're <laughs> big, hot dogs. Yes. So that would make sense. So definitely um, something soft for them to lay on mm -hmm. then. Um, and I assume those things have to be bigger too. A large dog bed is yes, probably more expensive. Right. So um, if you have a small house, it, they take up a lot of room. So big open floor planned houses are also a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so with Sully, um, you know, being 120 pounds and I, I don't know how tall he stands. He's pretty tall. He's at least to my, I don't know, hips or so. Mm -hmm. Do you have to worry about knocking things over? Did you have to move things around in your home? He hasn't knocked too many things over except for drinks with his tail <laughs> as he wagged by the coffee table and the drink went flying. Uh -huh. But um, he is surprisingly aware of his surroundings, but he is big, so sometimes he bumps into things. Mm -hmm. So is there anything with big dogs that, you know, you mentioned the bursas and things like that you have to watch out for on their joints. Is there other kinds of veterinary care that they have to have that smaller dogs don't? Um, well, no, but with any breed of dog, you should research what health problems that breed has. And in my case, um, cancer is a high running fat risk in them and also heart problems. Um, and then bloat, which is where their stomach can um, twist. Oh, okay. And um, any lo deep chested dog that could happen to. So you have to uh, be aware of that. And for us, like to prevent that, we don't feed him um, before or after exercise. He has to calm down before he can eat and be rested. So he if they've been running and exercising, they're higher risk for that okay. float. Mm -hmm. What is exercise needs like for a giant breed dog? Well, surprisingly, they are not that energetic. Um, he does like to exercise and run around for a little while. Um, since he's a puppy, we don't force exercise. He's just free in a yard. Mm -hmm. And then they come inside and sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> kind of like a typical puppy, right? Yes. <laughs> Will he be the kind of dog that requires more walks and things like that down the road? Um, no, I, if they get out and run a little bit every day on their own, um, they don't require long walks and they, they're calm. Gentle giants, they, they're very calm when they come inside. It's nice. <laughs> as far as Irish wolfhounds go, um, what was his breed? Do you know kind of the breed history? You know, what were they bred for? Um, well, as their name suggests, they were bred to hunt wolves um, in Ireland. And over the years, they hunted wolves to extinction. And so the kings that owned them would then hunt deer and elk. Okay, so they, they had a purpose. Yep, and they were, they'd go out with the horses and the kings and they would take down the deer and elk. <laughs> okay, so they, you know, they were working dogs. Mm -hmm. Do you see that uh, Sully is still wanting to be a working type of breed now? Well, he's such a puppy still, he hasn't shown a lot, but he's a sight hound, which means they see their prey at long distances. Like he would be at risk if he saw a rabbit to run very fast to go get it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I imagine he takes you for a walk sometimes. Yes. <laughs> and that's another good point is I knew since he would be such a large dog that I needed to leash train him as soon as I got him at 
he was already 37 pounds at 10 weeks old. Oh my. And so I made sure to teach him to walk nicely on a leash right when I first got him because he's so big he could pull you over. <laughs> so maybe looking into your local um, dog training classes exactly, might not be a bad idea. Exactly what we did. We went to the local puppy kindergarten and got him started with that and then he, we'll continue and do a basic obedience class because I think it's important that he's well behaved since he's such a big dog. Right. I mean he could easily knock somebody over mm -hmm. or things like that if he behaves you know like most puppies do right. which is jumping and, up and on people. And he's so big if he jumped on you he could take you down. Yep, <laughs> for sure. Um, what's his, you know, temperament wise, are giant breeds just, you know, kind of like other dogs? Are they? Yep, they generally are calm and he's very friendly. Um, they're not a guard dog. Some people might be scared of them because they're so large, but they're very friendly. Um, and they really love to be with their people. Uh, which is one reason why I chose him. I wanted a dog that wanted to be around me all the time. Sure, the kind of typical loyalty yes, and very people loyal. person kind of mm -hmm. thing. And um, I can imagine that he even tries to be a lap dog sometimes. He tries to crawl in your lap, which is <laughs> funny. Yeah, because he's a little bit big for a lap. I mean, he no way could he fit in a lap. Right. So, where did you get all your information when you decided I'm going to get this giant breed dog? Where did you? Go, well, you know. um, I first started, I was taking my small dog to dog training class and I mentioned to the um, teacher there that I wanted a large dog. And she kind of asked me what traits I wanted in a large dog. Mm -hmm. um, like I didn't want a really thick, heavy coat that shed a lot, things like that. So she gave me a list about ten, of about 10 dogs, 10 breeds. And I went home and I researched them on my computer. And then I went back to her and I said, this is the ones I think I like. And mm -hmm. she said, okay, well, let's go to a dog show. And I went and saw them. So you got to actually physically see them And then I work. met them and loved them. And then I um, went to several dog shows and I talked to the breeders of Irish Wolfhounds, um, several different breeders. Some of them um, gave me their phone numbers and I called them again and talked to them on the phone about all the different things, what you feed them, health problems, um, all that kind of stuff. And then I got on a waiting list for a litter of puppies. And I ended up waiting about a year and a half before I got one. So it's not a quick process if you want a good dog from a good line, I assume. Right, and, um, and then my breeder asked me if I wanted to show or just have a pet, and she tried to help pick out the right dog for me. Okay, so you would recommend getting around dog people maybe then? Definitely, and, and go meet them because you need to make sure that you really want a dog that big. and that, he's big. <laughs> yep, and that they really are what you want. I think meeting them is a huge factor. Know some before you decide to get one. Mm -hmm. So like you said, maybe those dog shows, maybe um, get in touch. Are there groups? Like are there Irish Wolfhound groups yep, out there? Yep, there's the Irish Wolfhound Club of America, and then there's local divisions of that mm -hmm. and they are always very welcoming to talk to people who think they might want one. Um, I did talk to some people in those groups and they want to give you as much information as possible and steer you in the right direction. I've come to know too that e dog people love their dogs so mm -hmm. they're never um, shy to talk about their breeds That's so true. Um, probably researching any breed is easy if you get with a group of people that yep. likes that breed. And I think it's important don't just pick a dog out by what they look like. Mm -hmm. Go meet them and see if you really like it. Through your kind of research and whatnot have you found that dogs, giant breed dogs especially, are they okay with children? Yes, they are. The, the big concern is that they could bump a kid and knock them down. But um, if you get one as a puppy and the kids grow up with it, I think that helps. Um, but yeah, they're very good around children and other dogs. They're generally very good. Um, if you get one as a puppy, if you have cats, that's you need to be careful because they like to chase furry, quick things. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to make sure they were okay with cats before you brought one home. Right. Because cats are like rabbits and things. Sure. Well, <laughs> and when they're trained, you know, to chase and right. um, hunt and work, that might be something definitely of concern. Mm -hmm. um, are there other things you have to consider with giant breeds or are there other things that are maybe concerning that you have to think about? Um, well, one thing is a fence. You would want on an above ground fence that they can really see because you don't want them to go crashing through it if they saw a deer or something that they wanted to chase on the other side. Um, 
So I assume you have a big fence at your house. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, yes, and there, he's not a big jumper yet, so it's not mm -hmm. super tall, but it's you can see it. It's very visible. Um, I would think that it, you'd be at risk with a, um electric fence that they could mm -hmm. go through it. Like the underground the type underground of The underground one, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I would like a solid fence. Mm -hmm. um, we hear a lot of people say that, you know, they like the solid fences because A, you don't get people sticking fingers through them when they're walking by and sometimes the dog can't see out of them, which is better that way. They don't have the tendency to want to run and jump, you know, in that case, that's a big yeah. dog. He could make a fence if he was And really another trying. thing is that it protects anything from coming in your yard. Exactly. We uh -huh. have the same thing with us. We kind of live in the country. So what we've done is put up a fence to keep animals from coming into the yard, really. Exactly. So yeah. Keep the dogs safe. Um, we have horses. So... Um, it's important to me that he doesn't run up behind them and bark at them or try to bite at them. So we just keep him separate from the horses. He needs mm -hmm. to, um, I wouldn't want him to get kicked or anything. Sure. Even though he might be the size of a small pony, right. <laughs> right. he's still um, smaller than a horse. So <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, he really is. But do you find that he is harder to train or different to train than other dogs you've had that are smaller? Um, I found that he is pretty easy to train. However, he's a breed that was developed to go out and work on their own, go chase the deer on their mm -hmm. own. So sometimes they act aloof to you, which, um, so you don't see a lot of them in the obedience rings because they're not, what do you want? I want to do it right, right. now for you. But um, he's very obedient. He will do commands and sit down and he listens to all that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because sometimes you might need that, you know, with um, the bigger breed dogs. Mm -hmm. So um, when we talked about, you know, the eating earlier, you said he eats eight cups a day. Mm -hmm. um, so you're spending $100 a month on dog food. Is there anything else that you find you spend a lot more on compared to small dogs? I mean, even equipment, anything like um, that? Well, he is so big that even the non-destructible toys are very <laughs> destructible. <laughs> so we have gone through a lot of dog toys and the cost of that adds up pretty quick. And I assume they're just like any other puppy. They need toys. And they need to chew. Um, so I found that the um, antlers last longer than other things because they're harder and marrow bones have worked well for him to chew. Um, you know, when they go through their teething, their um, teeth fall out. and because those teeth, are easy to spot. Because <laughs> his teeth are so big, we actually found about five of his teeth. That's impressive. Yeah, normally with puppies, um, for people that have smaller dogs, you can't really find those teeth. Right. A lot of times they're so little or yeah. they get just sucked up in a vacuum or stuck to a shoe, but I imagine with that yep, kind of dog, his teeth. <laughs> you can't find those teeth and probably have to throw them away. So, um, you know, what's kind of a typical day with Sully like? Is it just like other dogs? I yep. mean, nothing special. Yep. They get on a route. Wolfhounds will get on a routine very quickly. He learned our routine. He gets up and goes potty and we eat breakfast and then we go outside and play for a little while and then he comes in and sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> and then we repeat the process a little while later, but he's um, pretty much on a routine. Does he require more sleep than smaller breed dogs? Because I mean, I mean, they're bigger. Do they have to conserve more energy or is it the same? I think it's about the same, except wolfhounds are kind of lazy. lazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, large breed dogs are generally lazier. Okay, I wonder if we can get him over here to kind of show the audience um, how physically big that this dog Sorry. is just so. Okay, here he comes. He's been, for those watching, he's been kind of out and about around our studio. Hi. There he is. Yeah, so oh. this is Sully back in the picture. So I would say, you know, how tall do you think he stands? That three or four feet right there to the top of his back? Um, I think the males can get up to about 36 inches tall. Okay, so they're pretty big. Yep. <laughs> and so do you find when, you know, what's like the public perception when you're out with Sully? Are people afraid of him? I took him to a very big park with a lot of people mm -hmm. and 90% of people were drawn to him and wanted to come up and pet him and play with him and then there was a couple people that I saw up ahead on the path and they got off the path and left. Okay, so <laughs> not fans maybe. No, they saw a big dog and they were scared of him but um, mostly people are drawn to you. You'll find strangers coming up trying to talk to you about your dog because they're so big and I couldn't even, you know, first time I saw him, I couldn't help but notice it. You just, you want to, you want to go up to him. You're just not used to seeing that size of an animal. Um, so is it the same? 
kind of thing, you know, when people do come up to them, should they be cautious as well? Just like you are with anyone, ask they to pet. They should treat these big dogs just like any other dog. They should ask to pet them first. Hello. You know, they shouldn't pet them on top of the head. They should, right. you know, let Start the dog sniff here. them mm -hmm. first. And, yep. um, you know, same rules apply to being polite. You know, you wouldn't want a little kid to come up and hug him. Right. <laughs> right. That, yeah, I mean, he, he may not know them, and that right. may get him irritated. So, yeah, so. same rules apply for that. Do you have slobbers with dogs like well, this? That I always just want, you know, I mean, he has a big face and a big mouth. That was on my uh, list of criteria. I didn't want a dog that constantly slobbery. drooled. Mm -hmm. um, but he does drink water and get it everywhere. That was, and yeah, that was he something comes else I was over to you about. and gets water all over you, but he doesn't get the drool the way mm -hmm. some other giant breeds get. You know, like maybe I always think of um, those the Beethoven dogs, the St. Yes. Bernard's, yes. they have the, you know, the they dripping jowls. So Yeah, so that was on my list of things that I talked about with the teacher in class, mm -hmm. that I didn't want a dog that constantly dro drooled, and I didn't want a big shedding type dog. Mm -hmm. um, I assume they go through a lot of water in a day, though, too, you know, just because he's so big. So, yes. I mean, do you keep it you keep five water gallon bucket in or? buckets okay. instead of dog bowl? So it's not a dog bowl because I would think he would knock one of those over, too. I mean, because just, he's just so tall and big. So um, buckets inside and outside, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, is there anything else we should know about Sully or giant breed dogs? I mean, do you enjoy your life with a giant breed? I enjoy my giant breed dog a lot. He is a very good companion. Um, and he's funny to be around. <laughs> Does he have any downsides? I mean, are there downsides? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not to you, right? Because you did all your research first. Right. I mean, he's big, so he takes up room. So sometimes I wish our house was a little bigger, but overall, we he's, he's really a really enjoy guy. having him. Yep. All right. Great. Well, Jacqueline Hickman here from Charleston. Thanks for talking to us about Sully and giant breed dogs. It's Give some people something to consider mm -hmm. if they're thinking about going out and getting one. So, and thanks to you all for watching The Paw Report. We'll see you next time. Did you know full episodes of The Paw Report are on YouTube? They can be accessed at www.youtube.com slash WEIUTV. Then just go to The Paw Report playlist and select the episode you want to see. More information about the show is also available 24-7 on our website at WEIU.net under the Television tab. Hi, I'm Betty Hargis from the Charleston Area Dog Club, and today we're going to talk about healing or loose lead walking, which is many times what brings people to puppy class or dog class. They need to be able to have their dog walk nicely with them on lead while either going through a crowd or whatever, or just simply taking a walk. Hi, thank you. Nice, yes. Okay, okay. Gonna turn and go fast. I think you. Yes. What you were seeing here was, the first was just a regular in heel position, which is with the dog pretty much right here. When in this, this is heel position. If the dogs are way out ahead of you, you lose your control. And if you perhaps have a balance problem, that could pull you off balance and you might fall. So if you can keep your dog in this range, so that you have a loose lead, not one tight. The loose lead teaches them with the treat, and how, here's how we start it. If you're going along in this position, a little awkward at first, but watch, yes, yes, nice. So that they learn where you like for them to be, opposed to out there somewhere or behind you. If they're here with you, you're much more likely to have control and not trip or fall. The second part was doing a fast, which 
you will never walk the same pace all the time. So you need to have the dog accustomed to moving with you, whether it be a fast, slow, doing a circle. And those are, those are very valuable little lessons for them to get, because you may need to turn. You can teach them any word as long as it's consistent, you have patience, your body language is extremely important to them, and be sure to smile. None of us like to learn when we're all stressed out, and the dogs are the same way. It's very important if you are having a really bad day, don't come home and train your dog, at least not right away, because they're going to get upset because you're upset. Everything we feel goes right down the leash. Hopefully those have given you some hints and some ideas about what you can do and some of the fun things you can do. Training, we want training to be fun for you and for your dog. Production for the Paw Report is made possible by in Yurt Tire and Auto Center in Charleston and Mattoon. In Yurt offers complete auto repair. In Yurt Tire and Auto Center cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. More information at inyurt.com.